We've been covering here, just in the final hour anyway, the Queen's final journey, where she is now in Edinburgh, Holyrood, uh, Palace for us, their Holyrood house, I should say. Mark, what's the latest where you are at Buckingham Palace? Well, it's been another busy day for the new monarch as uh, today he's been meeting with the Foreign Secretary James Cleverley, also with the High Commissioners of the 14 realms and territories where King Charles III is, of course, head of state. We should always remember that fact. It means so much to us here in the United Kingdom, but it also means uh, very much to people in the wider realms and in the Commonwealth as well, more than 50 plus countries there who look and will look to King Charles III uh, for advice and guidance and leadership uh, over the years ahead. Now we've, for as far as the crowds are here, tens of thousands who are continuing to arrive uh, here at Buckingham Palace because they want to uh, try to pay their respects, if they can, at the gates of Buckingham Palace, understandably, but the way it's been working, because there's so many people trying to get into this area, the police have been filtering off quite a few thousand into Green Park, a much wider area where floral tributes uh, are being laid on what is now a growing carpet of tributes within Green Park around the uh, fountain there, but actually even around many of the trees in Green Park as well. Lots of flowers around there, which is really quite beautiful and moving to see as people stop around the bases of those trees again just to chat to each other, to share their uh, recollections and their thoughts on what Her Majesty the Queen meant for them. I should say that the gates to Buckingham Palace have opened again. We don't know if anybody is uh, planning to come or to leave, but throughout today again for another day we have the crowds have been treated to glimpses of uh, the monarch and, of course, the Queen Consort Camilla. Uh, she left a, a, about an hour and a half ago or so, heading, we think, towards Clarence House, where, of course, the couple have been staying because that's where the infrastructure is. That's where all the possessions are. Uh, it'll take them a while to get Buckingham Palace fitted out for them to move in proper as their residence, their base of operations uh, when they're down in London. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the rest of the day and tomorrow especially in the days ahead, what we're expecting is that King Charles uh, will head tomorrow morning sometime to the Houses of Parliament. He will address both houses, the House of Commons and the House of Lords in that grand Westminster Hall, bigger hall, where they can all crowd in to see their new monarch. He will address both houses then before heading to RAF Northall to take that flight up to Edinburgh to join his sister and brothers who are at the Palace of Holyrood House. Uh, and from there they will process to St Giles Cathedral. Now we're told that senior royals will join that procession, some on foot. That will be an incredible sight if that plays out, uh, as we expect, as they move down to St Giles Cathedral for a special service of remembrance and thanks that will be held at St Giles Cathedral, uh, where then the body of Queen Elizabeth II will lay in state there for some 24 hours, we're told, at St Giles Cathedral, uh, giving an opportunity for people, ordinary people uh, across Scotland, to head there if they can, uh, to file past uh, the coffin containing the body of the late Queen Elizabeth II. And it was a very poignant day, of course, as she left her beloved Balmoral earlier on this morning, as we had six of her own gamekeepers from the Balmoral estate who carried her coffin to put that coffin into the hearse, the royal standard on top of the coffin as it headed then on that very slow 175 mile journey from Balmoral Castle down uh, through Aberdeen, through Dundee, through Perth and into the capital city of Scotland uh, where of course Her Majesty uh, the coffin uh, is now resting in the throne room at the Palace of Holyrood House until, as I say, this procession 
heading to Edinburgh. After that, of course, we will, uh, St Giles Cathedral, I should say, after that 24-hour um, period of lying uh, in state at St Giles Cathedral, the coffin will be taken then to Edinburgh Airport, down to Northolt again, and it will make its way to here to Buckingham Palace on Tuesday evening. Uh, lying overnight in Buckingham Palace before then making the journey. This will be very special indeed for the many thousands who will be here on Wednesday afternoon. It's expected to make that journey on top of a gun carriage uh, with members of the royal family, many of them on foot, processing behind that gun carriage as it makes its way to Westminster Hall, where again the body of the late monarch Queen Elizabeth II will lie in state for some four days before we get to the state funeral which will take place on Monday the 19th of September. So an awful lot of ceremony, a solemn ceremony still packed in the days ahead for the people in Edinburgh, uh, in Windsor and of course here to see.